Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 32. In our incredible new tutorial series where you are unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. I will need you to pour yourself a nice tall glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice, no sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the SunFounder Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon and you can hop over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, my life and your life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion, let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to teach you is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 31. Now in lesson thir number 31, I showed you how to set up an, uh, how to set up a little app on the Raspberry Pi Pico W, which would go out and get the weather and then print on your PC screen the details of your local weather. Now that was the really hard work because you had to set up your account, you had to do this, you had to do all of that to get the data, and then we just sort of put it to the screen of the PC. But what would you really want to do, what you would really want to do is to have a mobile setup such as this one here, a mobile setup such as this one here. Let me get out of your way where we have the uh, where we have the Raspberry Pi Pico W hooked up to the LED screen and then running off a battery so that this would be kind of a mobile portable little sensorless weather station and then in the end what we're going to want to do is hook up an RGB LED so that we could give some visual indication of the temperature besides printing the, the, the details on the screen but I think for today we'll just get the screen working and then next week we will add that LED in. I think adding the LED will be your homework for next week but let's jump in over here and let me see if we probably need to start by you guys seeing what the circuit is going to be so you guys can go ahead and hook it up. I showed you in an earlier lesson how to get this OLED working so I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that. If you're unclear go back and watch that lesson but you can see that I have the SCK pin hooked up to physical pin 5 on the Raspberry Pi Pico W and I have the SDA pin hooked up to physical pin 4 and then I've got the grounds and the voltages hooked up as such. Go ahead and hook up your RGB LED so that you get that done but I've got the, R the red channel, the green channel and the blue channel hooked up over here as such. So get your circuit set up and then we'll get to the RGB LED next week. Does that sound good? I hope it does and so that will get you hooked up and then with that you should be ready to jump over here and connect to Thani. All right now I don't want to develop this code from scratch because we did quite a bit last week where we got the data we parsed it and we printed it to the PC screen so I want to go ahead and let's start by getting that code where we ended up last week so you can go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com you can use this happy little search icon and you can search on sensorless remote weather station project you can come down and you can copy that as such and then you can come back to Thani and you can paste it and then a couple of things I have to remind you I have to remind you that you have to use your own you have to use your own uh, API key from that openweather.org that uh, openweathermap.org you have to get your own key Okay, you have to get your own key and I showed you how to do that last week and also you have to tell it where you are. I am in Jinja, comma, Uganda. You could be in Branson, comma, US. I'm not sure if it's US or USA or you could put in your zip code as I showed you last week but you got to update those two things in order for it to work. Now also remember that you put here you would do something more like this because I have hidden 
my uh, password and credentials from you, but you would do something like, uh, inside of single quotes, my Wi-Fi, whatever your router is called, whatever your Wi-Fi network is called, and here you would put in your password, which is something like Pookie, your password is something like Pookie Poo, one, two, something like that. So you would put your password in there and your Wi-Fi. I am loaded, loading mine from the secrets file. All right, now if all that is as it should be, if all of that is as it should be, we should be able to run this and we should be able to get a weather report. We are connected. <clears throat> we are connected and boom, there is our weather report as we had it last week. All right, now what we wanna do is we wanna come in and we want to now get that on our OLED screen and then we could have a little portable deployable weather station. <clears throat> Okay, so let's come in and let's take this code and let's get that stuff working. Let's get that OLED put in there. Well, we're gonna have to import the OLED library. So I'm gonna say from machine, import what? Pin and I to C, <clears throat> uppercase. And we need to import the SSD library, the uh, the OLED library, which is SSD 1306. From that, import SSD 1306 <clears throat> underscore I to C. And again, if you've not used the OLED before, you need to go back and watch that lesson because I'm not going to tell you all the little minute details of that because I gave a whole lesson on it. So there we've got that imported. Now let's set up the OLED device. We're going to talk to it over I2C. So I've got to create my I2C bus is going to be equal to uppercase I to uppercase C. And then we are on channel one. We are on SDA GPIO pin two. SDA is equal to pin two. And then SCL is equal to pin three. And then we're gonna be operating today at a frequency of 400,000. And that's just how fast you're running the I2C bus. That will go pretty well. And now we gotta create our display object, our OLED display object. I'm gonna call it DSP. And that is going to be equal to SSD 1306 underscore I2C. And then it is 128 columns by 64 rows. And we're talking to it over the I2C bus that we just created like that. <clears throat> I'm going to run this and just make sure I haven't made any mistakes in getting that set up. So let's just run that. And right off the bat, it doesn't like uh, pin 7 SSD or uh, line 7. I have et from SSD 1306 import SSD 13. Oh, that sure looks right. Why does it not like that? I2C SSD 1306 import import like that. Let's try it again. <coughs> you see why I like to debug as you go along. It still doesn't like it doesn't like this in nine. So I have uh, I2C one. <clears throat> SDA is equal to pin two, comma, SCL is equal to pin three, frequency equal 400,000, like that. Okay, let's try it again. Off to a little bit of a rocky start here, huh? A couple of errors right off the bat. Okay, boom. So now we have our OLED hooked up and that looks pretty good. So now let's go in and let's start doing things to the OLED. Let's start doing our, uh, <clears throat> let's start doing our uh, displays to the OLED. Now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna wanna do this in a loop because maybe we just want to leave this thing running to where for the print statements, we just got one report and we displayed it, but now we're gonna want to loop. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say while, true, true, when is true, true, true is always true. So I've created an infinite loop. Now, right now I'm just gonna step through the display. So I'm gonna step through displaying it. But you see, um, 
you know, eventually before the lesson is over, we're going to have to come back and periodically read a new set of data, but I'm not going to do that yet. I just want to get the display working. And so the first thing that I want to do is display the text, that kind of greeting message. And let's just borrow that greeting message from our print statement. So let's look at this first print statement where it said, welcome. Let's grab that print statement and let's just grab the string and we'll come down and we'll snag it and use it here. And then I need to say comma, I want it to be at column zero on row zero of the OLED like that. And then let's run that thing. And then let's come over here and see if our OLED comes to life. <clears throat> it takes a little second to get the data. Hopefully it will be here shortly. And we, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. What do I do? This is the most common mistake that I make is I tell it to display and then I forget to what DSP dot show like that. All right. And then also once I show it, what I want to do is I want to DSP dot fill and I want to fill it with zero. So the next time through it clears the screen. And then what do I want to do is when I show it, I want to wait five seconds. So time dot sleep of five seconds. So I'm going to show it. I'm going to wait five. I'm going to clear the buffer and I'm going to go back again. So now let's see if we will see that. And that looks good. I think I've got it. So let's look here. I just want to see that the OLED has come to life and boom, welcome to Jinja. All right. So that is really, really, really good and we'll come back over here and then similarly i think i'll get the next i'll borrow that next i've got welcome to ginger but also what i can see is it ran off the end of the screen right because it just said ginger not uganda and so this was much too long so i'm going to have to shorten this up and just say welcome to ginger and i'm not going to be able to put the country uh the country there okay now what is the next line that i want to borrow well i'll get the next print statement and what that was is it gave the local time by doing this whole bit of nonsense here so I'm going to get that. I'm going to come here and we'll come down and we will do another dsp.text and we're going to use that string that we just borrowed and I've got to tell it now it is going to be on column zero, but I got to go to the next row, which is 16 pixels down like that. All right. Also, I think I can see that this is going to be much too long. I think this is going to be much too long. And so I don't think I can say local time. I think I can just say time. I can only put time like that. OK. And then what you can see is I also put the date there. I can't get date on that same line. And so I'm going to put dxp.txt. So I'll put time on one line and then I'll put date. I'll put date on the other like that. OK. And then I will concatenate that with the date part up here which should be that much of it should be date. So I'm going to cut that and I'm going to put that there. All right. And now I've got to tell where this one is. Well, this one is going to still be at row zero, but now I'm going to come down 10 pixels. So that would be 26. And now I should have the title and then the first row and then the next row if I'm thinking about this right. And I don't need these spaces in here now as a separator. And so let's see if I now have three rows of text if I'm thinking about this right. We'll come back over here and I have an error in line 38. Uh, I didn't close. I didn't close that. Try it again. Hold your breath. Actually, probably not a good idea to hold your breath because these downloads take a little while and I wouldn't want someone out there to asphyxiate. Okay, wouldn't want you to asphyxiate. So let's see. Whoa, still an error in line 37. Line 37. Come back over here. Date, string. Why does it not like that? Okay, date. 
Ah, I didn't put where it is. All right, so I need to tell it. It is row zero, and this time it will be line 26 because i got to go down 10 more to the next, uh, the next line of text. We will run this. <clears throat> we will come over here, and we will sip our coffee. Please don't hold your breath. Okay, still doesn't like that darn thing. I'm getting a little bit too big of a hurry here. Okay, I am just really, really, really messing up. So let me put it like this. Okay. I'm just, I'm just copying and pasting. I'm going too fast and I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. <clears throat> Okay, I think we have success. So look at that. Welcome to Jinja. The time is 1430. That's right. And it's 8 8 2023. Okay, most excellent. So I've got that part going. Let's jump in here and let's do some more. Let's see, what else do I want there? Well, I want the sunrise and I want the sunset. Okay, I want the sunrise and I want the sunset. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here and I've already got the string for sunrise. And so what I will do is I will take that for sunrise and then I will come down here and I will say display text and then I will display that. All right. And then I will give it a zero and then 10 further down should be 36. 10 pixels down should be 36. And then I don't think I can say at. I think I just have to say sunrise like that. <clears throat> and then I will do the same thing for sunset. We will come up here and get this. Okay. And then we are going to do, uh, and this should be D, DSP and DSP.text. And then this one is going to be sunset. And again, don't put the at. And then remember, it displayed the sunset in military time. And so I stripped that off. And then I need to tell it this is going to be at column zero. And this will be at row 36. OK, 10 more pixels down. And I've got time, sunrise, sunset. And then I do my show. I think this is what I want. So let's run that. And let's see if we've got that working. <clears throat> And boom, look at that time, date, sun, rise, sunset. What did I do wrong? Do you see my error? When I came to 36, I didn't come down 10 further. This should have been 46 like that. <clears throat> I'll run it one more time. But at this point, the screen is filled. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to go to the next screen because there's no more room for any more, any more text on this first screen. Okay, so look at that time, 14. Uh, 30 and so that's 230 on 882023 the sunrise here is was at 648 and the sunset is going to be at 656 p.m. so that is our first screen now let's come over and let's get ready for our second screen so we did a show we waited five seconds then we clear the buffer now we are ready to do the next screen well what do we know on the next screen what I know is I want to see this better. OK, I want to go ahead on the next screen and I want to go ahead and I want to do uh, I want to do this again because I want that title up there and we've cleared it. So I'm going to go ahead and get the title. So when it goes to the next screen, screen, it will have that title like that. And now I'm going to say DSP text. This time, what we are going to be showing is we're going to be showing the weather like that. So I'll just give it that tag and that will just be all that is on that line. And this is column zero and it will be uh, uh, row pixel number 16 like that. So I should say welcome to Jinja and then weather colon. And now on the next line, I will put the weather. So I'm going to say DSP.text. Let's put temperature first. We can jump up here and get that temperature. We can jump up here and get that temperature with this string. Okay, this string is going to give us that temperature. 
And so we'll put this, control V. Now I think we better shorten this up a little bit. And so we're just gonna put temp. And then the rest of this should give me the temperature. And then where do we want this? We want this column zero. And this time we want it at row 26 like that. I'm going to be brave and just go through these instead of running it over and over. The next one that we're going to want is the humidity. So we will get our most excellent humidity string up here. And then we'll come down, copy it. We will come here like this. Man, I hope you guys are had taken the other lesson because you're not learning much except copying and pasting today unless you did that uh, lesson 31. So I strongly advise you to go back and take that if you hadn't. So we're going to come down to the next one and we don't have space to put humid current humidity. So I'm just going to put humidity like that. And now let's go ahead and let's add the barometric pressure. And so I'm going to say dsp.text. And then I'm going to go get the barometric pressure string that we did last week. I'll get that. Edit, copy, come down here, control V. And then I explained all this last week. And then what we need to do is now we're going to be on column zero and we're going to be on row 46 like that. OK, that looks good. And we don't have space for all that nonsense. We're just going to say BP. OK, BP. And I'm going to do one more, and that's going to be the wind speed. So I'm going to say dsp.txt. And then let's get that wind parameter up here, which has already been taken care of. And this one, I don't, I think this one will fit OK like that. And then we're going to be at column zero, and this will be at row 56. OK, now we're actually going to run this thing. But what do we always need to do? we got to remember to do our show, our sleep, and our clearing of the screen or clearing of the buffer. OK, so we do the second page. We show it. We wait five seconds, and then we clear the buffer. So let's see what's going to happen here. <clears throat> we will run it, and we will come over here, and we will probably have an error. OK, but we have... We have one Tanzania, two Tanzania, three Tanzania, four Tanzania, five Tanzania. Boom, we go to the next line. We have no errors, and it looks like everything fit on. We go back to the first screen. Giddy up. We are well on our way here. That all looks really, really good. That all looks really, really good. Now we're going to do the weather conditions. OK, <clears throat> we're going to do the weather conditions. And so what we are going to do on the weather conditions, we're going to have to step through the conditions. So before we start stepping through those conditions, we need to go ahead and do the first two lines. We need to go ahead and do the first two lines, which are going to be, you know, the weather or yeah, what, what it's going to be is welcome to where we are. And then we're going to do the label conditions. And so we can get this. We want that again, which is just going to say, welcome to Jinja. We have that every time. And then what we are going to do is we're going to put that like that. So that's going to be every time. And then now we're going to go for I in range. OK, and the range of what the length of those conditions, that condition array. And that was weather of weather from last time. like that. Close, close, and let's spell weather right, just for fun. All right. So now we're going to step through the different conditions. And then what we are going to do is we're going to dsp.txt, <coughs> txt, and then that is going to be what? Weather. And we're going to get this from up here. Remember, we set that up very similar. OK, and then what we are going to do is we are going to get this part of it right here. OK, like that. And then we're going to put this. All right, now where do we want this? Well, we want this at 0. 
Okay, uh, yeah, we want this at zero and then line 26 or uh, yeah, row 26. And then let me say there was one other label that I needed up here. I want to say dsp.text. And this was the first one was welcome to Jinja. And then we also want to just put in the t title conditions like that. Okay, and then that is going to be at zero and then 16. And so that's the second row. And then this 26 is going to be the third row. All right. But what I want you to see is within that for loop, we've got to step down. So what I really want to do is I want to say row equal 26. And then here I'm going to put row. And then I'm going to go one down from that, which is going to be row equal row row equal row plus 10 like that and then i'm going to say <clears throat> dsp.txt and then also i don't want that plus in there that concatenation now what i want is the second part of that which was the conditions so if we come up here we have the current conditions weather and then i want the second part of it which was the description i want this part of it here. So I'm just taking in the print statement, which was one line, and I'm going to make it two lines here. And so this is weather now of I the index, and this time description. And now it's going to be again at zero comma row. And then I had incremented the row there as I should. I'd incremented the row there as I should. And then if there's a second, okay, I need to increment the, I need to increment the row again. Now row is equal to row plus 10. And that therefore, if there's a second condition, it will go in and it will start at the proper row. So you see, I'm incrementing on the case if there is more than one condition. Okay, I explained that last week. So there is everything that we need, I do believe. I do believe that's everything that we need. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a dsp.show like that, and then a time.sleep of five. Okay, and then a dsp.fill. So we clear it like that. All right, now I just got to make sure. So I started at 26, then it would be 36 and 46, and then it would increment again if there was a second condition. It would increment again if there's a second condition. So I think that is pretty good. Let's come in and let's run it. Let's switch over here and let's look at this. And so we have got here, we have got here the first screen, the time, the date, the sunrise, the sunset. Then weather, I've got the temperature, I've got the humidity, I've got the BP, and I've got the wind, okay? And then uh, we come up and we errored out on line 55. We errored out on line 55. What is it not like there? Uh, line 55, ah, wetter. How about weather? I thought I copied and pasted that. Didn't I copy and paste that? <clears throat> okay, anyway, we won't try to figure out what happened. We will come and we will run it again. This is pretty neat. I think this is pretty darn neat. Okay, there it is. Time, date, sunrise, sunset. And then weather, temp, humidity, uh, barometric pressure, and wind. That all looks good. Conditions, cloud, broken clouds, boom. <coughs> Only one set of conditions. And so now it loops back to the front page. Okay, so that is really neat. Now this is where the magic happens. We're going to come over here and we are going to <coughs> save. We are going to save this as, save as, and we're going to save it to the Pico. What is this nonsense? Okay, maybe is it still running? Let me stop program, say file, save as Raspberry Pi Pico. <clears throat> We're going to save it as main.py. And now we should be able to have this when the Pi boots up, we should have it run that. Okay. 
And so now what we're going to do is we're going to switch over here. This is the moment of truth. This is where the magic happens. We are completely mobile now. And what I'm going to do is I am going to disconnect the power. You see, I've got the battery. And then I'm going to connect it up again like that to those first three. And let's see what happens. No connections, totally mobile. I'm getting nervous. Nothing's happening. I'm getting nervous. Nothing's happening. Hmm. Ah! Giddy up! Look at that. You see this thing? This thing is totally portable at this point. You could put it wherever you want it. Okay, you could put it wherever you want it. Conditions cloud. Boom! Yeah, look at that. I love this. Absolutely love it. So we have a mobile, portable, standalone, operate on its own <coughs> weather station. That is really, really, really cool. But I realized that I forgot one thing. Somebody tell me in the comments down below what I forgot to do. I forgot to do something kind of important. And what I forgot to do is that here in this while loop over here, over here in this while loop, what we are doing is we are displaying every time the same data because we only read it once up here. So we really need to kind of take care of that. So what we're going to do is we're only going to read. We don't want to sit and hammer their site downloading data 10 times a second when they only update it like once every five minutes. And so we're only going to periodically update the data. So I'm going to say my time before I go into the while loop is equal to time dot time, <clears throat> which is like the system epoch time. And then what I'm going to say is if time dot time, the present time minus time dot or minus my time, the time above, if that is <clears throat> greater than 300, then what I will do is I will read the data again. Well, how do I read the data? With this weather command up here, I get that. So I will read the data if it's been 300 seconds. And then also what I need to do is remember those three variables we use. I need to calculate those again, the TM and the SR and the SS, because it doesn't do me any good to read the data unless I update those variables. <coughs> so we're going to get TM here, and we're going to copy those, and we're going to come down like this. So I got TM. This is very annoying. OK, I got TM. And now I need to get SR, which was the sun rays, the sun rays, like that. Let's get that. Okay. Sunrise. Now let's get sunset SS. Like that. And so now <clears throat> What that is, every 300 seconds, it will make a measurement and update those variables. And what I also need to do is now I need to reset my time is equal to time dot time. So when I actually get into this loop, then I have to reset. I have to reset that value, uh, that value there. And then I just want to print that I got in here. So I'm going to say print new data red like that. So I can see that I actually got into that loop. <coughs> now to test this out, uh, to test this out, I need to connect again there. To test this out, I don't want to make you wait 300 seconds. So let's read it every 20 seconds. Then we'll come back later and we'll set that to 300. But let's, let's just check this now. So we're going to run it and then we are going to come over here and we're going to see what happens. It is, uh, did I get an error? How did I get an error already? Let's see. I think I got an error. Why did I get an error? Doesn't like line 37. Line 37 looks so exceptional to me here. Uh, I got weather, local time is weather of DT. That says line 37 is no good. 
Ah, it's really line 36. I didn't copy that line good. And I didn't get the dot J S O N. So if you can't find the error in your existing line, look in the previous line, because sometimes that is a hard one to find. So now let's run it and see if that's going to work. Okay, it doesn't seem like it's getting an error. Let's see if we can come over here and watch the magic happen. Okay, got the first screen. That looks good. Got the second screen. That looks good. Got the third screen. That looks good. Now let's come over and see if we actually end up in that while loop where we read again. So far we haven't read again, <clears throat> but we'll wait and we will see. We will let it go on through and we will see. I'm kind of curious. I would have thought that it would have gone by now with a new read. Ah, there it is, new data read. And then uh, what we had the first time was it was at time 1445 and let's see in a, a couple of times through we should actually see it update the time but we see that we're reading the new data but it only updates every five or ten minutes and so we're not going to actually see we're not going to actually see that action happening but what we know is we know that we are reading the new data because we can see new data read. And if we wait a few more seconds, boom, it's read it a second time. All right, but then like I say, you don't want to be hammering their server that much. So in the end, you would really like to read it, say, every 300 seconds, which would be every five minutes. Okay, so we've got that updated. We've got that. We've got all that stuff. That is good. Man, and I love it. I love it. <clears throat> ah. Now, what I need to do is I need to save it as main. Okay, it's save it as main. Stop. Okay, make sure that we save it as main. All right, and now what we are going to do is we are going to unplug, and now we're going to restart it by taking this and then putting it back in. And then what we are going to hope is this thing actually boots up and is running the program completely mobile. Ah, giddy up. All right. So look at this. You see, you can walk around and go wherever you want, and you can be getting real-time updates via the Internet and a portable battery and displaying things on your OLED. How cool is that? I think that is pretty cool. Homework assignment for next week is to come in and use your LED to give a visual indication of some aspect of the weather that is interesting. You could key the LED on wind, or you could key the LED on humidity, or you could key the LED on temperature, but you want some visual indication of something important on the LED because this, this printing is kind of small. Maybe you don't want to come in and look at it. Maybe you just want to look up and see a visual indication of something that's interesting. If you want to take it to the next level, maybe you could do three LEDs. One would be wind, one would be humidity, and another one would be uh, would be temperature, right? So you could kind of cue these things in, and then you need to develop some meaningful color code that would be something that not just you, the programmer, would understand, but something that a general person walking by would sort of, it would sort of make sense what those colors mean. Okay, so that is your homework assignment. Guys, <clears throat> I hope you're having as much fun taking this lesson as I am making these lessons. If you enjoyed the lesson, give us a thumbs up. Also helps us with the old YouTube juice if you will leave a comment down below. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, when you do, ring that bell because that will give you notifications when future lessons are dropped. And I want to give a shout out to you guys who are helping me out over at Patreon. YouTube has not been showing me a lot of love lately, so I appreciate you guys that are standing with me and supporting the channel on Patreon. You guys are really what helps this great content keep coming. And then finally, I want to say to you all, make sure that you share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering. 
and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.